Hi, I'm OZ Hall. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This video is episode 6 in a series on the Behringer RS9 Rhythm Sequencer. See a link in the description to the full playlist for this series. In this video, we're going to focus on using the RS9 as a trigger sequencer in the System 55 modular system. Normally, the RS9 is used to trigger drums, what if we use these triggers and accents to change the sound of the System 55 synth? Here are some examples of doing that. The first example is one that we've used since Episode 2. The trigger out from Track 10 is patched to the Step 1 input gate on the 960 sequencer. You can see that cable there. Typically, we would just do this once on the very first step of the sequence. This ensures that the synth sequence is in sync with the drum sequence. One interesting feature of the RS9 is that you can use the large step buttons to select steps to trigger on a specific track. This change is non-destructive. This means that the saved pattern will not be changed unless you have the record button pressed, and we're not going to have that pressed. As a result, the next time the pattern is played, these notes that were manually selected go away. I'm going to demonstrate that using track two, which is the snare track, so let's listen to that as I add notes to be played. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe to my channel. Now let me demonstrate this on channel 10 by resetting the 960 sequence more than once. So you'll notice on track 10 that the very first step is on and it's going to trigger a reset. Now we've set the 960 to step number five and as soon as I start this, it's going to reset. and we can reset so now you can see how to use the gate out to reset to a specific step and you can use the step buttons to set up steps to do that reset at any point in the pattern and that can be very powerful for creating complex sequences using the reset feature. In addition to resetting to step one, you could also reset to any other step. We want to leave track 10 in place so that the 960 stays in sync with the RS9. So let's use track seven. The LM drum clap is on this channel. We'll leave in place the MIDI mapping of track seven to the MIDI note number assigned to the clap, so we'll hear the clap. That way you can easily hear when the jump to step five occurs on the 960. Let's start with the step five gate input and plug it into the trigger out on track seven. Now we're set up to demo this reset, but we'll be resetting to step five instead of step one. And here we go. Another destination for the RS9 trigger would be the shift input on the 962 sequential switch. Here's a 962 sequential switch. That's the shift input. These are the CV or audio inputs and we can manually select the different channels and we can also um, use the shift input to sequentially move from one channel to the next. This could be used to switch between CV outputs from two or three different 960 rows and the RS9 track 7 trigger would then control the shifting. So let's repatch that. And now let's test it. Now 
Note that the inputs for the sequential switch are DC coupled, which means that not only will they take CV inputs, they'll also take different audio inputs. So there's another application using the RS9 triggers to shift a 962 sequential switch. The first two examples were focused on controlling the System 55 sequencing modules. Let's shift our focus to the sound production from the System 55. Using the trigger outputs, we can trigger all sorts of events. These events can range from modifying a synth voice to starting an additional sequencer with its own voice. A few examples of an event are playing a sample via MIDI. This could be a drum, a sound effect, or a synth. Triggering an envelope generator, which modulates the pitch or pulse width on a VCO. Filter cutoff on a VCF. The gain of a VCA, perhaps with noise as the audio input. Or the position of a crossfader changing between two waveforms or CVs. You could also play a one-shot sequence which stops after 8, 16, or 24 steps. Hopefully these examples will inspire your patching creativity. Now let's implement the last example, playing a one-shot sequence. We're going to continue to use track 7 and we're going to take the output and use that to shift the 962 sequential switch that we've got here and what we're going to have for the input is our system clock and we're going to put it in input 2 and then we're going to take the output and we're going to route it into this other cabinet as the clock for this sequencer here. Finally we're going to take an output from the sequencer and connect it to the trigger input on the 962 and I'll show you where that's coming from. We're using the bus output, the gate output, from these switches. When the switch is in the bottom position it will send a gate and that gate goes into the trigger input for step one which is no connection at all. So that will stop the gate that's in input 2 from getting to the rest of the system. So now we have picture in picture and you can see both the RS9 and the sequencer and pay attention to the lights on the top. And whenever I set step 1 it's going to fire off the sequence that's up here. So let's listen. If you'll keep your eye on this channel, you can see it switch when you hear the hand clap, and you'll see it switch back when the other sequence stops. So we're going to start. And that's the example of firing off a one shot. The only other thing we're going to do, we're going to fire it off again, but add a digital delay so that the apparent note value is twice what it is for the main sequence. And that's the example of firing off a one-shot sequence event from track 7 on the RS9 trigger sequencer. This is kind of a quick aside from the rest of the video, but I wanted to point out that there is a reset input jack on the RS9 right here. And if we take our track 7 
output and put it into the reset jack, we can, on the fly, change the length of the pattern. So what we're going to do is change this pattern from a 4-4 pattern to a 3-4 pattern by having one, two, three full quarter notes and then we're going to reset right here. So let's listen. And that's just a bonus tip. I've mentioned before that the RS9 is basically a subset of the RD9. It's an RD9 without the drum voices in it. The RD9 has an analog filter for shaping the drum mix as a whole. There is no filter in the RS9, but what they do have is this CV output that allows you to send a control voltage out to your system anywhere you want to. In this case, we're going to take this cable that's input into the filter mixer and we're going to put it into the CV output and that will allow us to control the filter with a recorded track on the RS9 and we press record and as soon as we start to move this knob it's going to start recording and when it gets finished with an entire loop it will stop recording And you can hear that it's recorded that modulation as part of the pattern and will continue to play it. Of course, we can route this CV anywhere we want to in the System 55, but the filter usually represents a pretty good choice for modulation. So that's using the CV out to modulate the System 55. I want to mention a couple of things before we're done. First, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Second, in addition to the trigger outputs, there are 10 accent outputs on the RS9. The accent outputs can be routed in the System 55 in the same way as the trigger outputs. The details are complicated enough to be beyond the scope of this video. In conclusion, We've just scratched the surface of what can be done with a trigger sequencer like the RS9 in the System 55. I hope that this video provided some concrete examples that you can apply to your own music. Consider these examples to be a launch pad for further exploration. Let me know in the comments how you use your RS9 or other trigger sequencer. Thanks for watching.